Quarterback to no mulligans. Scott and Jack here in the studio at Franklin Bridge. And uh, one thing I was thinking about, Scott, was that I know we've been doing them in the studio here recently since they've been built, uh, since the studio has been built. But I want to go back on the back porch of Franklin Bridge a few times this summer. Like, those are always really fun to do. And I feel like they were uh, back when the weather was good, at least. Yeah, so. I, one of the plans I have is this will be a big podcast event um, in today. Week? Oh, today. Today. Yeah. When the you one hear that this, it'll be today. Today, yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, be so if you're evening. listening to this in the morning, come out to Franklin Bridge tonight. 6.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. <laughs> Tate, please release this one at uh, on next Wednesday. Yeah, in yeah. the morning. In the morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, the earlier the better. That hey, those if, 5 a.m. Or if, you, uh, if you listen to this and you came to the event today and you listen to this in the car this morning, please come up to us at the table either before or after. We have something for you. We have something for you. Yeah, so. <laughs> yes. By the That's way. That's going to be cool. Let's see how many people do it. I don't know what we have for you, but we'll, we'll, yeah, have we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure out something. Um Oh. That's, Dude, that's so fun. Good. Here we go. See, we're, yeah. gi- we're giving away stuff on the front end of a podcast. There you go. There you go. Even better. We normally so, wait to the very end. Oh, you got the benefit. What if um, the first the people who listen to this in the morning and come to us? They have to have a phrase to maybe say. Maybe they, they have to have a phrase to say, uh, shit, we'll, we'll come up with that. And you'll have to listen to the end of the podcast to get the phrase. Oh, right. yes. Yes. Or we'll, we, we may mix it in somewhere like you don't know when we're going to put it in. We're going to put it somewhere in this so you have to listen long enough to be able to catch the phrase. Depending on our merch, we should give them either a something free or something discounted. I don't know what like the numbers okay. look like for yeah, it. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know what the numbers look like on the merch, but we'll either give you a significant discount or give it to you, depending yeah. on what we do. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so great. So that's also a good parlay into the fact we- that uh, No Mulligans Podcast has merch now. Yeah. Dude, Eric has done a great job like creating some other logos. I haven't logos. even seen it. Dude, it's so good. Sorry. All good. Um. It's so good because, like, she's got a dark one that'll go on a on a light shirt, a light one that goes on a dark shirt or a hat. Dude, I and haven't even seen it. We've played with the greens. <laughs> oh man, I gotta show it to Jack now. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let him look at these here for a second. But um, today, uh, while Scott's pulling that up, uh, <clears throat> our pi- our topic for today is just going to be we're gonna talk about Elijah a little bit, what he does, and uh, also about Scott and what he does as well, specifically and how they fix their golf swings. Uh, I had a buddy who just joined the River Club this past week, and um, Elijah was talking to him about just how we fix golf swings, talking about functionality over uh, positioning and just how important actually having a functional golf swing is really going to be. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, that's sweet. What's <laughs> that? Is that going to go on? What kind of shirt is That'll that going to go on? Something black. Is that going to go on like at the back or is it going to go on the front? Uh, Do we know? We, we don't know. Like, We'll figure it out. We. Well, by the time you listen to this, we'll have it already figured out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have a couple different options, but that's that's one of them. I, yeah, I actually I like I like the white one. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We Loyal have, listeners, you're gonna want this. This is look cool. at this. This can go on a dark shirt as well. This can go on a this can go on a light colored shirt. Excellent. Excellent. Um, want here that here are my other favorites. That's probably for like a t shirt like on the on a like on the, the chest pocket chest pocket. Yeah. yeah. That's oh, off, off the back of the shirt. That one's sweet. That would go on the That's back. That's my favorite. I don't mind the just straight, plain, yeah, black straight and white. Black. Uh, All right, for those listening, you're probably really dude. bored now. But it's oh, gonna be cool. gosh, it's going to be so awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> cool. Well, let's talk about what we're talking about today. Uh, we're going to make this a quick one, a turn and burn. Yeah, so, I mean, you were watching me teach Micah a little bit and, yeah. you know, trying to figure out. Because so a lot of you ask me a before question. You, before you say this, yeah. it's really cool. Uh, I, I get to see you fix golf swings for people, let's just be honest, average Joes, right, who, yeah. who come out here and try and play, and that's awesome, and getting better, and you can be a stick one yeah. day. But getting to see you talk and teach yeah. and basically talk to a professional, it's a different It's a different breed. It's a different tonality. It's, yeah. it's you, We're talking about minutia. We're talking about taking 1,500 RPM of spin off of a driver. Might even be, I mean, we we were even talking at one point with Micah taking about two or three hundred RPMs. Right, and so it's just like the fact that we can, and, and I've gotten a little taste of this as I've gotten better as well. But when you can really start honing those feels and just talking at a high level with somebody else who can who can do that, you really start to get into a different game. And so it's fun to see you you really chat with a tour player and and a college kid as well who's a stick. Well, it's funny the funny that you say that because Ken today, Ken Mayer, a good friend of mine. Um, He'll probably be helping us with the podcast setup. He'll be helping Tate on uh, in two weeks or today. Um, 
and he got to watch parts of my lesson. He said, dude, it's so different. Like you completely flip your yep. conversation because he got to see, um, he got to see me work with a gentleman that's pretty much a beginner, uh, a guy that went through CTC this winter who's like a 15 handicap, and then he got to see a, a plus four handicap. It's like, dude, the the way you teach is entirely different for all of them, and the spectrum couldn't be broader. Like from way over here to way over there. Not everybody can do that. There are some guys that are awesome with high level players. There's some guys that are awesome with beginners. There's a hard for people to span the gamut of brand new raw nothing to yeah. super high level. Yeah. And so I enjoy that. Um which kind of goes I've gotten into... better with beginners. That wasn't always one of my better components. Really? But I've gotten better with beginners. I've learned a lot from Mickey Smith when yeah. I was in uh, Birmingham. Uh, with juniors and some beginners, and he did it. Just the way he communicated with them was really strong. Uh, the way he motivated them without intimidating them with your knowledge, right? And so simplifying, simplifying. Um, I actually think beginners just helped me with my elite players too in some regard. Mm. Continuing to simplify. Yeah, there's always something to learn from everybody, right? So I think sometimes even if you're stuck in the minutia of teaching yeah. pros, right, you might go and teach – somebody else who's just starting kind of have an epiphany about something that you need to talk about with a high level player. So, right. And, and vice versa too, uh, more in the vice versa scenario. But, um, yeah, that's one thing that, that I was going to start with talking about with earlier when we were focusing on, uh, putting. Micah's putting stroke. I'm um, sitting on the ground. You're sitting on the ground. Mike is hitting a few putts. He's pulling, he's pulling putts pretty consistently about two degrees. Yep. And, um, and you told him to do something. Changed his setup. Changed his setup. He started rolling putts in, and you go, I just don't know how. I, I don't Elijah, know how I did that. Elijah asked me. He's like, so why did you do that? Because oh, I told yeah. Elijah to go ahead and try and fix it. He recognized yeah. the aim error. He yeah. recognized the yeah. pull yeah. error. He's like, why did you do what you did? Why did you do what you did? And I, <laughs> I said yeah, to him, like, I just don't know. I don't know. Well, and so. I, I, I genuinely don't know. I just know that it was going to work. Right. Exactly. But he's like, well, that's not helpful to my learning. I was like, I understand that. <laughs> but in some ways, it actually is helpful. The fact that you can't make the cognitive leap, and neither can I, you're getting to see a level of instinct that has been developed over almost 15 years. You know what's interesting is I think we, both of us are, are feelers. Uh, and this is what I'm going to say first. I, I was standing over here on the wall, and I was watching the putts roll in, and I watched that whole interaction. And I said, Scott, I just think you're really good at putting yourself in somebody's shoes. And because of that, you can feel as if you are Micah, you have that stroke, and you have that pull. And because of that, you know enough about the golf swing to also be able to tell them what to do. And you can't say it, and there's not a logical way of getting there. It's because you can do it in your own brain, in your own head, and that's what makes you special about it, right? Yeah. And so, um, and you're like, oh, save that for the podcast. That's great. Because I believe I'm the same way, right? And I think that a lot of high-level players are. I think you see it in Micah. You see it in Austin Jean as well. And you've, you, we've talked about on the podcast when they're having a lesson. It's just a different lesson. Like, they can, they can do the, the thing that you want them to do on a dime. They can do exactly what you want, even the littlest of minutia, they just get, right? It's that mixed with their headspace. Yeah. And so, honestly, like you were talking about how he just kind of shifts his hips a little forward and gets it out. Dude, I can I, – I know this sounds weird, and I'm not trying to say that I'm you at yeah. all. I can feel that, like, in me, and I can see how that would iron right. out a little right. bit of a pull. Yeah. And so that's the reason why I thought that was so profound. The, uh, and I didn't want him to move his upper body a lick. Because his stroke is so good. The stroke was super clean. It's almost just coming across the line just barely. Yeah, and it's it's so minute. Like, my brain's picking up on, again, our brains are processing 10 million bits of information, 9 million of them are visual, right? Mm -hmm. I, like, you, somebody needs to copy how many times I say that. I'm going to go back and you find it. say that. it at least every, know, once, once every a month. third podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and... In that moment, as I'm watching him hit putts and I'm taking in everything else to what he said, what Elijah has said, what I sense, I know him well. I've taught him for almost two years. Um, like I know him well, and That's I'm weird just that I've known you for longer than he has. Yeah, and I'm just sitting there <laughs> looking at it, literally sitting on the ground in the studio, looking at it, going, "All right." 
I want you to. I, and I didn't start in. I was about to tell him. I was like, oh, Elijah, come here. I want you to see it. And like Elijah goes there. I was like, no, no, no. Look right over my head. Just I want you to watch this. All right. I want you to set. I want you to move the ball fractionally forward, a quarter or a half. Uh, quarter or half a ball width forward. I don't know which. Just once it gets there, I'll know. Like just nudge it forward. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Like I can sense it. Like whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, we're good right there. And then. I want you to set just listen very carefully what I ask you to do. I'm not even going to move him because if I touch him, I, we won't have it. This is one of the moments I'm normally hands on, right? This is one of those moments I can't touch him. I just knew I couldn't touch him. High level player stuff, right? And here, I was yeah. like, I want you to make this. I want you to shift the hip. Don't move anything else. Don't move your hands. Don't move your arms. Don't move your head. Don't move your t chest or torso. I just want you to set the hip. And what we had caught after. Like before he was leaving, he's like, "Can you just do a check on that?" He was adding the chest. I was like, "No, no, no, no! You can't touch the chest. Everything else is the same. Just, just yeah, the hip. Just, just the, hip. the hip has to mm, just move tap right there. Tap it in. Just and tap dude, every it in. he didn't miss a putt in here. Yeah. After that, no, he didn't. Dead center cut. Like I'm not exaggerating. Like every ball was in the center of the hole. Dead center, end over end. Like in the pull that he had, almost looks end over end. But it was just not quite end over end. And we can look at it on TrackMan and probably tell you what everything was happening. I wasn't. This is all pure instinct and all pure feel. Yeah. I didn't miss a putt. And so um, I think you're right. I mean, this is going to sound like kind of weird, but I think it's from uh, oh, How to Kill a Mockingbird. Is it To Kill a Mockingbird? How to Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> 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 to Kill a Mockingbird. Um. You never truly know what it's like to be another person mm. until you walk crawl up in their skin oh, yeah, yeah. and walk around in it. Yep, yep, yep. Now, that's a different thing than putting yourself in their shoes. Like yeah. walking up, like getting up in their skin. Rebecca hates it when I quote that, <laughs> that, that line in that book. But like to me, that's what I try to do with every single student. That's why I ask, like, what do you feel? Where do you feel it? When do you feel it? Try not to put words to it. If you put words to it, you'll confuse you. Like, it doesn't quite get it there. Mm -hmm. Like, what's it like to be you? And that's where, like, I'll put my hands on them. I'll feel where their body wants to move. I'm like, okay, now I know what it's like to be you. Yeah. Right? It's almost like we swap places all of a sudden for just a moment. And I can – the fact that you said that, like, you know what it's like to be them – I was like, that's what that's what, that's my what it is. is. Yeah. But I but I can't put my finger on it because it's so unique to them. And I think it's unique from both sides, right? Is because I told you that like I feel like I can do that with people, but the difference is is that you have so much knowledge about the golf swing. You've lived it, ate it, breathed it for your whole life to where because you are this feeler and you have the knowledge in the golf that you can know exactly what to do with people in exactly the right moments. But let's also not confuse this too. This is why you and Elijah's teaching is so good is because it is based on outcome and not on looks, right? We've right. talked about this right. so much right. about right. Like right. if you go to a golf tech, in fact, I was on the range at McCabe in West Nashville and this woman was having a really hard time, uh, you know, hitting the ball. And this guy, you know, came up and offered to give her a little mini lesson. And I, this guy is just a weekender for sure. Right. And I'm sitting, I'm like, and I they're have trying my, to help. Right? right. And I have my bucket of balls and I notice there's an open spot right to the right of them. And I grab it. I'd grab this just to listen in, just to, to listen in. It's like, dude. we got content for the yeah. podcast. Yeah, totally. And so, uh, oh, I'm, I'm watching, he's like, you know, just shift the ball, you know, your ball, your setup, you know, your setup's not right. You know, shift we the just ball got a done talking about setup. Yeah, exactly. Shift the ball a little bit this way. Now you're going to want to swing, you know, this way. Right. And it's like, dude, like, <laughs> it's like, it feels like me trying to read braille. Like it's <laughs> you like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, I'm just like, this is so cringe to listen to and to watch. And she's like, oh, I think I got it. And then, you know, a blind squirrel, a uh, blind squirrel finds a nut. Like she hit a, a really nice one. And he's then, like, he's like there, right there. Yeah. Just keep on doing that. And I'm like, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. And right then now. she probably hits a couple more tops and fast. Oh, and oh yeah. Shots and then afterwards. He goes, Have a nice day. You know, you're doing great. Keep it up. He leaves. She still has a whole bucket. I continuing to watch her hit, and dude, she just goes right back to what she's what she was always yeah. doing. And so yeah. I say that to say that was a funny story, but I say that to say where if you come out here and you get a lesson from Scott or Elijah, 
you're going to get somebody who is more worried about what the golf ball is doing than what you look like. And a lot of people think you have to change what you look like in order to get the ball to do the right thing. So, but in reality, we're trying to fix the ball and not you. So, right. That's actually almost dead on the way I try to describe it in River Club Clinics. I actually talked about this earlier this week, which at this point would be two weeks ago. <clears throat> but I talked about it in the River Club Clinic. I said, hey, look, what I'm trying to get you all to do is have control of your environment and what you're doing. Have control of your body. Right, all of you want control over the golf ball, and people are like, well, I just something just happens when I go hit the golf balls, like because you're trying to hit the golf ball, you're trying to make the golf ball do something good. We talk about process thinking. Process thinking is total focus on the movement and letting me have the ball. My job when you come for a lesson, Elijah's job when you go on the golf course with him for a lesson, is our job is we are in charge of the ball. You're in charge of you. Now, we're going to direct you. I'm going to direct you specifically on the technique side. He'll direct you more on the strategy side, how to hit certain shots. But, like, I'm going to direct you on the technique side to what you need to do. But once I give that to you, if you're struggling with it, I'll give it to you in a different way. Once I give that to you, it's 100% your job to fix you. And in that moment, once I give it to you, you have to totally surrender to the fact that I have the ball. I got it. And I, this is why I'll stop people sometimes when they're, like, trying the movement, but they're not totally sold to it. They're still kind of stuck with the ball. I'll be like, do I look nervous? <laughs> I love when you say this, too. Yeah. Do I look nervous? They're like, no. And this Sometimes at this point, especially if I know it's the last thing they've needed, I'll sit in the chair because it's a sign of it is done. It is finished. There's nothing else that needs to be added. And they're like, well, no. I said, my job's to worry. And I ain't worried. I don't care if you hit the next 40 golf balls that far to the left. I don't care if you top it. I don't care. Doesn't matter. I got the ball. And when they finally let go and let me have the ball, oh, gosh, it's so much fun. <clears throat> and I'm this not is... perfect, but, like, well, I'm really good. And it's a lot of fun to, like, because to me it's magic in their hands. It's like if you've ever gone to a magic show, you've had close-up magic done, and, like, you get to pick the card, and sometimes they'll do the trick in your hands. That to me is some of the most. It's got to yeah. be thrilling to be a magician oh because it feels like they did the trick. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, whoa! Like I did that. It's like that's what I want you to leave here with. I yeah. want you to leave it with like you changed it. And they come to me like Scott, thanks so much. You changed. It. I was like, mm, actually, yes, my job is really hard picking the right thing. But once I pick it, like the next forty-five minutes is pretty much all you. Yeah, that's a. This might be getting a, a little deep, but I was talking with one of my friends. He was having a, a problem in his life that was making him feel a certain type of way. And um, it made me think about people who have, who have control issues. And he was asking me, we were, you know, we were confiding in each other, and he was, he was asking me, he was like, you know, should I do this, should I do this, should I do this? And I said, what if you don't have to do anything? Like, what if you don't have to do anything? What if that's the answer? What if acknowledging its presence is the answer to give you the peace of mind that you need to be able to perform in the way that you need to and I think about that with you when you sit down in that chair and you say it is finished you know I've done everything and they still don't have confidence you're sitting back there being like listen man like you can come back to me or you can't but like this is what you got to do here and then they're like you sir you know they surrender to you you sit back in the chair they keep on doing it you might give them another pointer being like good now just do this a little bit more and, and then, I may get back up and push them further right, right, right? Exactly. I don't just like sit back yeah, oh, just, 10 minutes back right, I'm just going right, to sit in the right. you don't, but you don't. that's a signal and it's a signal to myself too like don't add anything right right but We're it done. also tells them okay let's not freak out let's take a breath let's do this thing and then i've been with you in some times where it's just magically worked like right after that yeah. the ball starts flying and then they're like whoa i've never done that before and I you're and then it, the, it's yeah. so funny to watch you because you're sitting in your chair and you're like yep that's what <laughs> yeah. it is and sometimes <laughs> if like the bigger their reaction the bigger mine is yeah yeah and that's a lot of fun like today uh i had a guy's like man i just hit my driver terrible and he hits two low snap hooks and He's not – doesn't have a great golf swing. He's probably an 18 or 20 handicap. I got – his first ball said – I watched him and said, all right, here's what we're going to do. I, in this case, opposite of Micah, I walk in. I put him right where I need him to be with his shoulder and his hip inside. He's like – so he tried to put words to it. I said, no, 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 don't put words to it. Just feel this. Stay right here. Do that. Let's rehearse it one more time. Do that. And just hit. He said, that's it. It's like, yeah, just just do that. First ball – Bang! Smoke to driver. He's like, oh my gosh. He's like, that was it? 
He shows up, so to give you some context, he showed up eight minutes late to the lesson. I took my time getting started. It was a 30-minute lesson. I took my time getting started. I was like, you know what? He's late. I'm going to slowly get up. I'm going to go get the balls and put them out there and let Elijah finish his fitting. And we go out there. We don't start the lesson until almost 3.15. At this point, I've got 15 minutes left. And we fix it on the first ball, smokes a driver. It's like, that's it? I was like, yeah, hit another one. Smokes that one. Great. Awesome. Then he gets, uh, he's like, we'll work with a three wood. I was like, go grab your three wood. First three wood wasn't very good. But uh, so I got in there and let him feel it one more time. Smoke the three wood. Smoke the three wood. And then he's like, can I try a hybrid? I was like, yeah. Smoke the hybrid. We hit, I, we couldn't have hit more than eight golf balls. 323 rolls around. Lesson started at, remember, we started it at 315. 323 rolls around. He's like, I'm going to go sit down and have a beer. That was awesome. I got paid for a 30-minute lesson, and I was done. I was done in eight minutes. <laughs> so much fun, dude. <laughs> and this is not. And like... he was so excited. Yeah, like, that's what I'm excited no, about. And that's the is thing. that he's excited that... <sighs> and he's empowered, dude. Like he is empowered to go and play, and he's like, "Oh, cool! I'm not just like stuck." I was like, "No, you're not. That's so much fun, dude." That's the cool thing, and that's the cool thing about so business. Awesome. That's the cool thing about business to me is like. I think that a lot of us are trained in like, you know, this amount of hours is this amount of pay, right? But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is results, right? So let's say you're a, you know, a, a software developer and you develop like the self-driving technology and let's say you spend like three months on it and it's perfect and then you get paid out billions of dollars. It's like, well, you got paid for, you got paid for, for the amount of value that you provided. In a li- and it, it doesn't, of, in it doesn't, a limited it doesn't amount of time. matter the amount of time. Yeah. It can be it can be great. It can be small. But and the like, faster you can do it, the more exactly the and more perceived value you end w- up having. What's even crazier about this yep. story is that the fact that he was like, "I'm going to go have a beer now." It validated to you and to him that I've provided the amount of value, and it didn't matter the amount of time that I gave it. In. And he had total trust in me, and yep. to- he to total surrender. <laughs> he didn't even have to go hit any more golf balls. Yeah, he didn't need to hit. Even use the yeah. last seven minutes of the yeah. lesson. He yeah. was gone. Exactly. So I think that's a huge testimony to you and what you do, what Elijah does, in just showing yeah. that we can fix you and we can do it in eight minutes. Like, <laughs> like that's a new tagline, you know? <laughs> we can fix you and we can do it in eight minutes, you know? Like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, I still want to try the, like, five-minute fixers again. It just didn't. I didn't think we advertised it well. I think once we get enough traction this year, it would be something fun to do again in the I've, summer. I've got the first candidate for you, the guy that I introduced you to yeah. yesterday. We uh, we need to spend like four to six weeks advertising it and really pushing it. Yeah. And um, or maybe we just need we need to film a day. I'll get uh, Blake and some other people. We Dude, just I wonder, film a day where we just walk the driving range and just fix golf swings. I would love to do that. I would also love <clears> to uh, post up on one of the days for the uh, for the club championship. And like have the the table with the on it or with the with the uh, the little apron thing. What I'm forgetting what it's called. And just have like you know I can fix you in five minutes. Let me show you, kind of deal. Oh yeah. And like, like see if somebody would be willing to put their trust in you right before the club championship. Dude, that would be. <laughs> those are really tricky because like, and I get those every year. I get a couple of them. Those are super tricky because it has to be something that can be transferable made a habit quickly substantial enough of a habit yeah to stick yeah essentially the piece has to be incredibly malleable has to be bendable if well it's and you not then you'd you'd think if you show up to the, the the club championship and want to get the help you'd think you would have a malleable <laughs> mindset doesn't mean you are a malleable person but yeah yeah it could be it does easy, and if easier. i pick if i pick the wrong those are in some ways the highest risky the most risky lessons to give is because like you can really screw them up yeah right before you know what they're asking actually probably me not helping you is actually the, me helping you yeah i was thinking about that too but it'd still be cool to see it's hard like do I, it. yeah. I don't mind the challenge people are up for it it's um you should make them sign a disclaimer being I, like I'm not, i am not guaranteeing results <laughs> but you know i'd be fine trying to guarantee results because they'd put more stock in it right yeah it's fair. like i don't and if they fail, you know, I'm past the point in my career now. Like, I'm doing this for 15 years. 
If they play bad because they decided to take a risk on something, that's fine. Guess what? I'm going to learn something from that. And guess what? I've fixed and a I fixed a lot learned, more people than I haven't. So why don't right, you? You know, if, right. if this one failed, you know, I, right. I'm secure. And, in my and if self. I if I'm if I make them worse for that one lesson, like I have no problem with them coming. Like if yeah. they decide to go around and tell people it didn't work, I was like, well, I mean, you decide to come the, the week of the lesson. Like yeah, those yeah, are yeah. literally the hardest lessons to totally, give. Totally. They're actually like. High level players are actually the hardest lessons to teach. Yeah, and super beginners are the hardest level lessons to teach. So it's hard on either side. It's on. It's hard on the ends. I think yeah. it's even harder at the very, very top end of really, really high level players. Sure. Because if you pick the wrong thing, you can unravel. It's like a, it's like yeah. a stack. So if you think about high level golf swings, think about playing Jenga. Mm -hmm. It's a giant stack of Jenga blocks. Like it's been stacked super high from That's a lot of hard work. That's already been played. That's it's already, already been, been played. Play. All these pieces have been pulled out. Yeah. It's like each piece is on one lever yep. and something slightly it's right out of place. Before it's gonna fall. You need to pull out something or add something in. And if you touch the wrong one, mm -hmm. the whole tower comes down. So not only that, but these people also have such a high understanding of the golf swing that they could probably they sniff you out. Yeah. Well, sniff you out, but also have too much understanding to the point where they don't trust what you're actually yeah, doing, yeah. and then it's hard to make that clay malleable again. And they won't tell you. Yeah. They won't tell you either. Yeah. Um, especially if you don't know them a whole lot. But yeah. I think even harder than that is the person that shows up right before a tournament that's never had a golf lesson with you. Mm. And you don't, like, because there's a thousand ways to go, and 995 of them are bad. They're looking for a one-off miracle. <laughs> they are. Like, that's the probability yeah, of yeah, doing no, well. Yeah. Like, I don't mind the challenge. In fact, we're back to the mastery with uh, Jamie George. Mm -hmm. That's an exercise in mastery. So I want to kind of finish this off with two things. Uh, we're, yeah, I think we got the time to do this. Two things, uh, kind of piggybacking off of that. Um, I was telling Elijah and a few other people that are that are close friends of mine here at the bridge uh, for some people, and some of you that are listening to this will be like, wait, is he toying with me? Um, there are some golf swings. I'm like, you know, um, instead of going with, like, here's your core swing, like I've been telling you, there's, I would say right now, probably, it's a low number. It's probably 15 to 30%. I can't put an exact number on. It depends on week to week. But where somebody will come in for a lesson that's a new student or a current student, and I'll just... Uh, I'll just teach him something different. <laughs> because I can't, because it because it's going to sound arrogant, right? I don't, I don't intend it to be this way. But to Jamie George's point, when I'm taking myself through a course in mastery, I'm actually good enough like I could take them down the entirely wrong road. I could go 180 degrees in the wrong direction. And then I could spin that thing. I could make that work and bring it back around where it needed to go. And they would never be the wiser to me doing it. I have that I much can command. I totally see that. Yeah. I have that much command of it. And sometimes I don't even realize I'm doing it until after I've given the lesson. I'm like, yeah, that maybe wasn't the best way to go, but it worked out really well. And I probably could have gone this way or that way. <laughs> like, it's... <laughs> but that that kind of actually proves my point of like, I don't have all the answers to fix a golf swing. Well, and sometimes you got to know what doesn't work in order to figure out what does. Right, so. and I don't. I'm trying to discover new avenues. Like I will even do this. I'll see another instructor somewhere across the country that like has a completely opposing teaching philosophy to me. I'm like, I don't agree with that at all. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try that on somebody this week. <laughs> because guess what? There are people that go to see that person that get better. Well, and the other thing too is that, that do it in a different way than me, and exactly. it validates. Now, maybe they're a method teacher and they're limited in the number of people that they teach. Maybe they just have a different uh, – they have a different preference as a teacher. Um, it doesn't make one right and the other wrong. I mean, at the end of the day, this, the scorecard is the final arbiter. But, like, I could – like, I'm, you don't know. I might be trying something with you this week and you don't even know it. Well, the now, other my high-level players, I'm not doing that. No, no, no. no. not a chance. The other thing, too, is the fact that you're willing to go down so many paths also shows people who are uh, who have come to you for lessons or who haven't come for you to lessons and are considering it. It shows them that you are able to fix a swing from multiple points, right? Like, you can fix a swing no matter how they come to you. A lot of people, these method teachers, will 
So that we'll, they'll start from the same base every single time, mm-hmm. right? But I think what's different about you and why I love your teaching philosophy so much is that you're not going to teach one student the same way. No. It's all going to be unique to what they need. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people are missing. That's what we've preached. And that's why I believe that we are the best at what we do here at Franklin Bridge. Mm. I appreciate you saying that. Well, I, I truly believe it. And no. and I'm also patient zero here, if you really think about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was definitely one of the first people yeah. that you've given a lesson to here. Yeah. That you give a lesson yeah, to. Yeah, within the first three months I was here. Um, yeah, no, I that that means a lot. Sorry. I'm kind of somewhat emotional about that. Um, which is good. Good emotion. <laughs> I needed that today. <laughs> Love Appreciate it. that. Let's end it on that. No, now. I don't want to end on that because i got to talk about Elijah a little bit. Okay. So, yeah. um, just a, look, we're trying to do something different here. All right. The single most deficient component in golf instruction. There's a lot of deficient components, and I'm a part of some of them. And I've been a part of a lot of them in various parts because that's just a part of me learning and getting better, right? I'm going to make lots of mistakes. Um, is people don't know how to play the game. It's why this podcast exists. It's why both books exist. And it's why I've already got the title of Elijah's book that he's going to write. <laughs> I'm going to help him write it. We're going to co-write it I love together. That. Um, uh, Erica's got a practice journal that we're going to probably modify and make better. Uh, so she's a part of the team. I'm adding somebody else that's going to get to write a book. Elijah's like, I'm going to write a book. I was like, yeah, you are. Because you are the first person to ever define that I've talked to. I've talked to teaching professionals, talked to golf professionals. I have way more experience in the game than I do, way more years in the game than I do, and none of them been able to define what it means to play smart. I can't. Yeah. Like Now, my books kind of take you through principles, but like, yeah. like to be able to put a singular phrase on it, Elijah and I were just in here one morning just talking. I was like, whoa. St-. Like, he kept trying to finish his thought. I was like, no, 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 You don't, you do not get to finish your thought. Stop, you know, all right, whatever other language you want to use. Like, stop. Do not press go. Do not, you know, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Stop right there. This is what he said. He said, uh, I've got it written down somewhere. Um, get the exact words. He said, what. A op he said he said this options is what makes a good miss good. Mm. Options is what a good makes a good miss good. Yeah. And here's what that means. And actually, that is the full definition of playing smart. Because it allows for highly aggressive strategies. It allows for highly conservative strategies. It allows for high level of skill. It allows for low level of skill, high level of experience, low level experience, everything in between, all types of golf courses that you'll play, tournament pressure, non, stroke play, match play, every single angle. Here's what he's saying. When you pick a shot, once it's hit, no matter which of the places it finishes in of the shot that you hit, it leaves you with, once you get to that ball, you have multiple options into your next approach, multiple good options even, mm-hmm. as to which direction you can go. You talking can hit a five iron, you can hit a nine iron. You can hit in, in, our, last, in right, our last episode. Right. The OP, and sometimes not even being in the OP, you still have a substantial number of sure, options. Sure, And so <clears throat> when he said that, I went, dude, that's it. That is playing smart. And you can be highly aggressive. I can go through these trees here, take an aggressive line, and that ball's going to finish up in a number of different scenarios, all of which, when they end up there, I then have multiple options, a good number of them, where they're at. Which Bad may, strategies on, on. trap you where all you're left with is, I can only yep. hit X or Y. I cannot hit A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, I, J, K. People will, will confuse these having options with a, a conservative play, right? But in reality... This this is what's cool. This is like this is my lap, like final thought because I think this is amazing. If you go through those options and you realize that an aggressive strategy will leave you with multiple good options, then that gives you the green light to be super aggressive on that shot. Correct. So if like it, let's mentally example if we uh, if we say like here on number seven, right? We're playing the back tees on number seven, that long hole, right? Yep. 
you can just aim like right uh, this could be this is just what i'm thinking here you can aim right over those big mounds and it doesn't matter if i really push it to the right pull it to the left it goes straight like i'm going to be left with multiple good options so that tells me just freaking go at it and today right. when i was playing with micah we both bombed one both had different shot shapes different ways of taking the shot we both ended up in a good place and we both were on the green with eagle looks and it was just like that is a complete validation that we yeah. could have had multiple good options there and it landed, landed us in a good situation to score I'll, I'll even give you something a little more specific there was a um i was with erica when uh last summer on hole number one we played in the evening one time mm -hmm. and the pins in that back right hole location in which case the bpn is long right of and a pin that's like where's the pin back right back right on oh, yeah, that yeah. on that like right next to that so tier is on that tier on the back right Right. there's yeah. like it's like a 15 Small. foot by 15 foot part of the green yeah it's not very big no um there's fringe whatever but she was in the right half of the fairway past the dog leg so she was in she was in the op she had a good angle in now the, you don't have a, they don't feel like great angles because of the way the green set but it's the sure. best angle it's good yeah it's good and i look at her and i said do you have any idea the number of options you have right now? <laughs> she was probably like, what are you talking about? This ball is in such a good location. I don't even care what the lie is that you're in. Like, it is in such a good location, especially with the way the green is designed. I said, you can take a high shot, carry it all the way up there. You can hit a draw. You can hit a fade. You can hit a high. You can hit this club. You can fly to club. You can take something off a club. And you can go this far. You can take an 8-iron. She had, she had like a pitching wedge distance. You can take an 8-iron. Open the face up a little bit, land it 15 yards short of the flag, because the yeah. green's 35 yards deep and it's five off the back, and and it's one from the tier. And I looked at her, I was like, so that math leaves us with yeah, basically 30 yards. You land it 15 short of it with an eight iron. Now here's the cool part about this eight iron. This is actually the single best shot you can pick out of all of them, but you have a ton. You can pick any of them. If you hit this 8-iron and you catch it a little bit heavy, assuming you have some control of her speed, she doesn't have to be perfect. Uh-oh. All right. So <clears throat> what would happen is she lands on the front half of the green. She chunks it a little bit. It's going to land on the front half of the green. It's going to have less speed, less spin, lower trajectory. It's going to land on the front half of that green, catch that. It's barely going to catch the front of the green. And it's going to race all the way up into yep, the BPN. Yep, and it, that slope is going to take the speed off, and hopefully it'll just take it'll, it right it'll be It'll be right into the BPN probably 15 to 20 feet yep, from the hole. Yep. I said you can hit it dead on the speed that you want, and it's going to land right in the valley in the low spot between the two slopes. Chase. And because it lands there and you've hit it decently solid, then it's going to have the a right amount of trajectory. It's probably going to roll up to about 15 to 20 feet from the hole, maybe less. Up in the same spot. If you gas it a little bit, it's going to land into the upslope. There's literally a 15-yard window that you can land that ball in. And still have a good look at and it. And they may all end up in virtually an identical spot within no more than 20 feet of the hole. We hit that shot. She chunks it. Lands on the front. Rolls all the way up to about 15 feet from the hole. I was like, let's hit it again. Gasses it a little bit, hits into the slope, gets up there. It's like four or five feet from that ball. That's like, also not like that. That is the and that's an amazing shot. And it's gonna leave the ball is going to leave her in that spot. Then she can die the putt in. She can hit it firm. She can intentionally if, leave it short. Even like, if you extra gas it, there's still that slope on the back to where if you land it, you're still in the BPN. You're still in the BPN. And so it's, it's right. Even if you hit it too hard, like it's yeah. such like it was a moment where. So many options were opened up, but if she was on the left half of that fairway, super hard. Half of those are gone, and you pretty much have to take a wedge and land it perfectly up on that tier in order to keep it at a reasonable distance. And if you try to take something like an eight iron, if you land it short, now you're landing into a steeper part of the front edge of the green. Not it's going to kill the there. speed. It's not going to yep. chase up. Yep. If you gas it a little bit, you're not the on back. the steeper part of the slope, and there's nothing to hold it. Yep. And it's going to jump off the back. Yep. But by being on the correct side with the contours of that green, it was the most beautiful place you could put it. Love it. And so to Elijah's point, playing smart means this. And guess what? Golf, every shot to some degree is basically a miss. Mm -hmm. Is options 
is what makes a good miss, which is every shot, good. Options is what makes a good miss good. And that is why I stopped a lot. One more time, one more time. <clears throat> options, or being left with options, but options is what makes a good miss good. Love it. Given that every single shot that you ever hit is a miss to some degree. Who said that? Who famously said that? They said that like something along the lines of like you're uh, never gonna hit perfect shots. I d- I don't know like golf is golf big, is a game of, one of misses. The yeah, golf is a game of yeah, misses. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. there's a there's that's kind of the phrase, but um that that like little moment right here at the end, um you know, you know goose fraba. That's the word you need mm. to come and talk to us about goose fraba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we okay. did goose poop last time. So say the Fraba. wrong we don't say the wrong one. That's right. That's goose right. Fraba. And we'll have something for you. Cool. Um but like I stopped him in that moment because I realized for the first time somebody has finally said what playing smart actually is. So and stay it covers tuned for that book. Every single gamut. I'm gonna try to have it done. I don't know if I can, but through the work that he's doing this year, I'm gonna try to have us have it done and possibly released by christmas sweet stay tuned for that and that would be incredible dude That'd it's be just so cool. and it's going to be from a player's perspective not a teacher's perspective um well yeah just like scott said stay tuned for that that's super exciting we uh, got swag tonight we got swag tonight so come on <laughs> goose goose Fraba. and uh yeah we really appreciate you guys if you guys are looking at this on youtube please thank tate in the comments or what you thought was the most valuable thing that you heard uh on this episode uh please Go ahead and subscribe. It really helps uh, other people who are looking for golf podcasts to see our name pop up first. We really appreciate it. Uh, And just thank you guys so much for listening. We really uh, appreciate you guys listening, watching, viewing, subscribing, whatever you're doing. The fact that you can get some some, uh, useful info out of this really means the world to us. So we really appreciate it. And thanks again. We we forget to thank Brooks sometimes. Yeah. Thank you, Brooks, for the opportunity to be here. We're a public golf course. Yeah. We are about to have... A PGA Tour club fitter on our staff. That's really cool. Scott Wilkerson. And I hope you all come out and meet him tonight. I've worked really hard here to get to this place, to help build this place up, to help all these people that come around me be successful and let them have their own careers and and impact people in their unique way. And, But I didn't earn this. Like, that's a gift. He's a gift to to us and I'm really excited to have a chance to learn from him and for you all to have be impacted by by Scott Wilkerson so love it thank you all well thanks guys Uh, remember there's only one rule shoot a lower score we'll see you the next time it's been the No Bulligans Podcast peace there's no rule shoot a lower score